So we'll move on to a discussion about filling our vacant Board of Education seat, resulting from Richard Walker's resignation. Go ahead, Dr. Figueroa. Well, we have a, like, um, a history here where we have actually, in the past, appointed a member that just left the board previously to fill a position. That happened when Lori Rich had to leave, and Dean Ballas, who'd been off the board for a few months, um, was uh, able to fill in the rest of Lori's term until the next year, I think, right? Mm -hmm. um, which brings us to Lisa Rosenthal, actually, directly. So, um, you know, I think one option would be to <laughs> ask Lisa to graciously serve again, um, although she's been planning to have a lot more free time. <laughs> <laughs> As it turns out, though, I learned at our last meeting that we have 90 days to make a decision, so that could mm -hmm. be part of a negotiation. Mm -hmm. um, <laughs> <laughs> we wait outside her house. <laughs> Go on vacation. <laughs> so that is, um, seems to be an option out there. And, and that would be a terrific uh, service to the community and to your colleagues. I, I would be happy to do that if it's the will of the board to have me, um, and, and not par partially because I, I respect you all very much and um, do not want the board or the district to be in any sort of um, discomfort because of the vacancy. Um, and partly I have to say because of the great affection that I have for Rick Walker who was such a wonderful and valuable member of the board during his, uh, his two years of service, um, not to mention the many years of service he mm had -hmm. in the past. Um, and I think it would be a disservice to not step into that breach if people want me to. Laura? Well, I wholeheartedly second Deirdre's thought that you stay on this. I think it would Helping the transition next year. Willing and happy to do it. I'm happy. Deirdre? So we would get to defer for a year the despair of saying goodbye. So, <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, and really, I mean, you've been such an amazing member of this of this board. It, uh, your your willingness to serve is is truly appreciated. I will say one more thing that seeing you get up and give your son his diploma on Saturday, <laughs> I said to myself, I mm. love the opportunity. <laughs> <laughs> it's a great reward. <laughs> Diane? Um, yeah, I think if you're willing to do that, that would be, you would of course love that. I've been a valuable member all these past years, so that would be wonderful. I think it would be difficult, the other option would probably be a Special election, mm -hmm. which would take time, and then someone would have to come in and do training, and it would be difficult to do that in a year, I think. You know, there's so much going on, so we don't have to do that. That would help us. All right, so I'll, I agree with everything that's been said. Um, so it sounds to me like we have consensus. Um, so we have to put it in the resolution on the agenda for the next I, I would Yes, I, I would say if, if that's the way the board is inclined, as I'm hearing, and, and Lisa's agreeable, of course, then I, I would recommend that we have a, a resolution on the uh, organization meeting on the, the uh, 12th of July to uh, appoint Lisa to, to fill the, the remainder of the term vacated by Rick Walker. And... Uh, as long as we get four out of seven votes, then you're in. <laughs> <laughs> so something tells me it will be unanimous vote. But, uh, so that that's if, if that's the way we want to go, that's what I think we should do, and uh, then that's a that's a done deal. Great. Okay. Well, thank, thank you. you. Thank you, Lisa. Thank you. All right. So with that discussion yeah. concluded. We move on to good news. So go ahead. Fabulous graduation. Yeah, <laughs> really fabulous graduation. Really the capstone of the year for us. Can, can I piggyback on that? Sure. Um, one of the really remarkable things about um, the graduation at the high school is that 
of course, it sort of reminds anyone who's actually got a kid graduating of the previous graduations and the sort of the echoes and the resonance of those of those special moments kind of coming together in that final ceremony. But the really beautiful thing I think about graduation in this school district is the way so many people come to it mm -hmm. who don't have a child who's graduating mm -hmm. and community members yes. come. Kids who are coming up, you know, it, it, mm -hmm. through the school come and watch the oldest ones moving out into the world and alums come back and you know it's a it's genuinely gives one a feeling of such community the, the many people who uh, want to come and speak to the graduates and to the community and to give gifts of money and the amazing um, generosity of this community mm -hmm. in supporting our young people and that to me is actually a really distinctive thing about Rhinebeck and I think we should mm -hmm. cherish it and um, and describe it and celebrate it mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. um, because it is it is really special. Very good news. Mm -hmm. All right, Diane, did you have your hand up? I just want to say it's just been a great school year. Just generally, that we finished another really excellent school year, and we just heard tonight all three things that went on. Well, I, I'd piggyback on that and say, obviously, it's, it's not been without adversity in a number of different, no, but in, in spite of, <laughs> I mean, in spite of that, I think the good news is we can sit here today and say, you know, it was a pretty good year. Right. So, you know, when you can say it's a pretty good year when things haven't been perfect, although I got to say that commencement was about as close to perfect as I as I can recall one being. Thanks to you and your staff for that. Other good news? All right, move on to old business. Any old business? All right, seeing none. And seeing no public <laughs> present, we'll move on to other. Laura. Other, um, Tom, thank you for putting the DVIC minutes, notes, and oh, yeah. um, in our packet. I wanted to ask about this RK exchange. Um, yep. The, the digital delivery of know, that, but, <laughs> paperless enrollment. Paperless enrollment. So, are we one of the seven schools that are considering enrolling in this? And Not this year. Be? We're going to consider it for the following year. This is the first year it was offered. Uh, we wanted to see how the other school districts adapted to mm -hmm. it because there was a lot of work you got to put into it. Mm -hmm. And at the time, that's when our, our uh, personnel assistant was. Uh, she, she resigned. And we haven't replaced her and not mm -hmm. planning to replace her. But it was just too overwhelming to get it up and going as of July 1st. So we wanted other school districts to do it first, get any any bugs out of the way, and that we would probably follow up with the next year with them. Great. Um, yeah, I was thinking, it might, despite the upfront work, it might actually help. It yeah. Might help mm -hmm. Yeah. Great. Diane? Do we have a date for shredding? Oh, yes. Shredding? Yeah. I'm we glad you mentioned it, actually. Yes. <laughs> it's yes. a few more weeks. Like but we just got something from Donna, Donna yesterday. Did didn't arrange we? for it. <laughs> Let's put that in the book. Uh, well, you can bring it in any time, oh. but uh, do you Actually, have the date there? Just circulate that date. Oh, we will. Yeah, you don't want to have yep, buckets. Yep, we were going to send that out. Donna, where are we? Donna shredding. It's going to be Wednesday, July twentieth. July twentieth is the day. Wednesday, July twentieth. So. You have to get it here, and they're usually here first thing in the morning. Okay, so, so before the 20th. So before the 20th. Yeah. So you can bring it in with you if you want the, when we have our next board meeting. Really? Will it be sitting around your office? That's a lot of stuff. <laughs> it's okay? It's got to sit somewhere. Yeah. <laughs> All right. It's yeah, really. I mean, you don't have to, but <laughs> it's one less trip for you to make up yeah, here. Yeah, and typically what we'll do is we'll put it in a room, lock it up. We have a big yeah. wheelbarrow, and yeah. we'll... Uh, <laughs> yeah, not a problem. So for the twelfth, we could bring it then. Yeah, you can. Yeah, you can bring it anytime. Or anytime before to. or right. anytime. after before the twentieth. Okay. Right. Whatever works for you. Okay. Mr. Slayton stopped by and dropped off a bunch of stuff a couple months ago that he found that he had and said, "Here, get rid of this stuff. It's not mine." Okay. So I mean, right. we'll take that stuff whenever you have it. Okay. 
Deirdre? Uh, yeah, another thing, I just, instead of removing it from the consent agenda, I just want to note that we're accepting the resignation of Brian McDonald today, tonight. And, you know, he was, I just want to recognize that he was instrumental in revamping the middle school and then into the high school technology program uh, as a young graduate and really has done a terrific job. And I know we're all sorry to see him go, but we wish him well. But he really came into the school with a very particular mission that was, you know, kind of a lot to take on. <laughs> and he um, really ran with it. So we've been fortunate to have him. And I just wanted to acknowledge him publicly. Oh. Other? Uh, the other, the other that, that I had was we have two law conferences coming up this summer. One is uh, the, the NISBA one in Latham is on Thursday, July 14th. The, uh, the one, um, the Mid-Hudson School Study Council one down at Mount St. Mary's College is on Friday, August 5th. They have at least one of the same speakers, Jay Arona, it, it will be speaking at both. But beyond Jay, the the uh, the topics are different, so you could attend both and only have to snooze through Jay's, and he's usually pretty entertaining <laughs> anyway. Uh, if you are interested in going, especially the uh, NISBA one in Latham on the 14th, you need to let Marianne know, like, before the end of this week, because we, we have to get you registered. Uh, the other thing is kind of doing a little thinking out uh, the annual NISBA conference. Mm -hmm. This year is in Buffalo, and I don't say that to discourage anybody <laughs> from going. Buffalo is a lovely town that time of year. Um, but if, again, if we're going to go, or if anybody is going to go, we need to make plans for lodging and registration and whatnot. And the further th into the summer it gets, the more difficult that becomes. That's that's all. So just so I I have been remiss. I haven't let you know, but I would like to go to the to the convention. Okay, are you taking notes there, Marianne? Yep. Mm -hmm. What are the dates again for both? Uh, the twenty seventh through the 29th. It's like a Thursday, Friday, Saturday this year. Oh. You can't go. I, well, since I can't go, I might not agree with the Duffs. <laughs> she some chicken wings. Yeah. <laughs> Is this yeah. October 27th? Yes, yes, yes I'm okay. sorry. Yes. I'm a big fan of Buffalo. I love Buffalo. Yeah, having spent quite a bit of time there, my son went to school there. And, uh, it's really nice to tell. Yeah, it is. Uh, I think that the benefit, a benefit to being in Buffalo is that it would be less expensive. I know we're, you know, we're very expense minded and we did mm -hmm. shave some money out of the board budget but we didn't we didn't cut it flat so there would there will be money for folks to go and there are other ways to address it if people want to spend less money but i think just the fact that it's in buffalo will will be a less pricey <laughs> price tag than having to do it in new york city as much as i enjoy going room. to the city yeah, but. Uh, would it be reasonable to consider maybe a cap on the number of us that go? We should try to contain those costs a little bit. Maybe. Well, you know, we, know. Well, you know we can do, we can, maybe in her spare time, uh, <laughs> yuck, yuck, Mary Ann could, could check out some of the costs for the hotel rooms, like Nisby usually has a block, and just kind of cost it out to say, okay, this is what we budgeted. This is what we anticipate it's going to cost for a member to go for the three days or two and a half right. days, and uh, either we need to limit the numbers to X or maybe, not. maybe we won't have to. I mean, maybe we'll have enough. So yeah, you know, we could do some preliminary costing out over the next several weeks and then let you guys know this is what we think we can, we can make happen financially. Yeah. yeah. The one in Latham on the 14th. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. All right, any other, other? All right, so then we'll move on to our action items. Uh, is there anyone who would like to remove something from the consent agenda? 
All right, so may I have a motion upon the recommendation of the superintendent of schools to approve the consent agenda? So moved. Second. All those in favor? That's unanimous. That motion passes. We have a motion upon the recommendation of the superintendent of schools to approve the 2016-17 course enrollment waivers. So moved. Second. Any discussion? All those in favor? Oh, wait. Hold, hold, hold. Oh, wait. <laughs> discussion? Hold it. <laughs> I, I, go ahead. Um, so, and, I'm sorry, I'm sort of No, I know you have questions. I just wanted to comment that I just, you know, again, it, when it relates to our board goal, I mean, just the number of um, courses here, you know, are, many of them are not mm. uh, their electives. I love it. I think it's great. Yes. And a lot of, you know, enrollment. So, good work. Yeah, work with our guidance counselors and our faculty developing you know, courses and uh, the work in curriculum uh, this summer. Uh, of course, hopefully, it will be to student interest and student interest. Yeah, mm -hmm. very exciting to have that moment. Yeah. Ed, would you just review with the board very quickly what the changes are from mm -hmm. this revision that you provided to me today and the original document that went into the board packets on right. Thursday or Friday? Yeah. Um, I don't have that original document, so I'll keep going through memory. That's the way. Do you want to copy it? Yes. I am. Painting. This is the original. Yeah, I got it. Mathematics of finance. Yeah, painting bumped and, up. And mathematics of finance. There's a couple. Oh, so right. yeah, those are the same. So one of the yeah. uh, significant uh, reductions we had had uh, introduction to sociology, a semester course on it was enrolled, in, uh, not enrolled, but had 11 requests. And as some um, of our counselors are beginning to uh, resolve, some conflicts and also continue to meet with students who have uh, changes to their requests. Uh, two other students requested introduction to sociology, so now that has 13 requests. So that would uh, remove that. It's above the threshold oh, now. It's above the threshold. Okay. Above the threshold mm -hmm. well. I think that was 14. Oh, and we picked up two. Uh, not that this requires a waiver, but two other students requested mathematics and finance. Um, had been 25, and now the course request is 27. And you picked up two in painting, apparently. Uh, painting. Yes, thank you. Yeah. In addition, we picked up two students uh, um, uh, requesting painting, which is one of the upper, upper level art courses. And I'd, I'd expect some here and there um, with. Mostly, of course, nothing that would bring them above 12, but here and there for some of the courses, um, as students resolve some conflicts and continue with guidance counselors, this will be an excellent set of courses for the students. Um, with the exception of uh, some of our second semester courses, um, graphic design and multimedia and uh, printmaking, those courses are preceded uh, in semester one by our courses that are above the threshold and the teens. And typically what happens, um, well, what happens historically is that students in the first semester course will enroll in the second semester course. For, for one reason or another, they haven't completed that enrollment process yet. You can see in uh, the enrollment in multimedia last year, the 15-16 enrollment was 18. And so I would expect that our enrollment for that second semester course this year will be about the same. Mm -hmm. In addition with uh, graphic design, that's preceded by um, digital photography. And uh, currently, semester one, we have uh, 15 students who have requested digital photography. Mm -hmm. uh, so I expect that a number of the students will take graphic design in the second mm -hmm. semester. All right. Deirdre? Um, so you've presented to us all the courses with fewer than 12 requests for our consideration. Mm -hmm. Are there courses that had very low enrollments that you've decided not to offer and therefore are not appearing here? Yeah, just uh, um, our uh, uh, fashion design mm -hmm. and uh, interior design courses had mm -hmm. one or two students requesting okay. those. 
so we did uh, the council said we didn't plot those. Okay. And I assume without an idea that they would fill up with kids from other classes. I mean, I obviously I had to make a decision. Yes. Um, that, uh, and you know, before we make that decision, I you know, I'll confirm it with Robert and Jeff. Right. What, what do you think? Can we expect any more? Right. Um, because they're on the front lines, obviously, in terms of right. students. Right. It didn't seem like those courses would pick up uh, any of I, I thought perhaps was that uh, some of the courses, introduction of theater design, may have put some of those students. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, All right. And, and may I ask a follow-up question? Is um, AP Euro isn't on this list, so does that mean that it has over 12 students signed up for it? Yes, it has over 12 students. Right. Uh, Excellent. Over 12 students, I think it had um, 13 or 14. Great. And what, uh, since you have the sheet there, what uh, what is what are your enrollments in uh, looking like in AP Chemistry? Okay, that, that, and that was a softball I just threw you uh, <laughs> as, a, as a result of us all being at uh, graduation on, uh, <laughs> on Saturday. But uh, you can kind of. Yeah, 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 I would agree. Well, fantastic. And then uh, chemistry, so we have uh, seven students requested chemistry. Regular chemistry? Regular chemistry. Okay. So that's, uh, that's, as I talked with Mr. Brunel and Mr. And that's you know, chemistry alone. For me, just as a little side note or back of a uh, uh, checkbook calculation, that's one of the bellwethers of this strong academic program. How many students are taking out? How many students are taking out? Right. Um, so that, I think, is a combination both of the students are prepared, uh, and the science department and the math department, and Mr. Stevenson's. Uh, um, Sense of talents in terms of uh, engaged students and the um, instructors. That's great. Diane? Um, so, this the multimedia impregnating, so you, you thought of it as going to increase in the moment, but you improved this tonight and it doesn't increase, and you still want more classes for students, or what do you think will happen? Well, that's, that's a great question. If, if more did enroll, then I will say that historically we have had more students enrolled. Um, you know, practically or logistically speaking, we're looking at a, a second semester course, um, and you know, there are, it's, it's more that we're going to reduce uh, the teaching load. I don't know in terms of the time frame if we would be able to do that um, in, uh, in compliance with the uh, uh, districts that we're doing that we are today. Um, if we were to do that, if we were able to meet those timelines and reduce it, Point one. Point one. And so the impact there would be uh, off the top of my head. I think we'd be looking at the fact that we have both the chancellor and we have our. So, not a, not a best case scenario. Um, I would uh, most likely, if we were looking at that direction, I would uh, prefer with the department to park and see if there was another worthwhile and effective use of Still not, at least I'm to make it a better for tomorrow. All right, other questions on this item? All right, so all those in favor? That's unanimous. That motion passes. Thank you. May I have motion behind the recommendation of the Superintendent of Schools. 
approve the proposed mastery option regarding the Common Core English Regents examination as an alternative to taking English 11 Regents and advanced placement literature and composition simultaneously. So moved. Second. Okay. Discussion? Deirdre? So, uh, my concern is, um, you know, one of my concerns I, and is sort of the way we run the earth science program has created this sort of subculture of kids who get tutoring to take the earth science regions in order to skip earth science. And that does seem inequitable that people who have the ability to pay for tutoring are more like advantaged then in order to 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 take uh, to pass to get through not take the earth science uh, class that we offer and I know I've been in many a curriculum meeting over the years to discuss all that and what that means but and I'm sure there are similarities and differences with this proposal but I have concerns about creating another system by which kids who have an advantage financially um, can prepare to take the English exam. Now, I'm trying to figure out, because you just reported earlier that 99% of our kids passed in 11th grade, right, this year. So I'm trying to understand, like, what, what meaning to draw from that, right? So, like, our kids don't have a problem passing it in 11th grade, what does it mean to take it in 10th grade? I guess a part of me wonders, what about the, so that's a consideration in sort of who are we advantaging, how we're upping the ante continuously, like in this sort of larger culture of keep pressuring kids to take more AP and keep just, you know, more stress. You know, we, we had a report from a committee, the school start time committee that had met with our student support services staff who talked about the stress that kids are under and sort of what what do we put in place that encourages kids to continuously try to more APs, more achievement, more achievement, achievement. Um, when, uh, you know, I'm just, I just want to be conscious of what kind of climate we're creating around <coughs> equity, around stress, and then around a question of, well, what about like when it was English honors, what happened? How is that? How is that decision made? Right. So, mm -hmm. like, if this is because the AP now there is no English honors in eleventh grade, but there previously was. So, how was that decision made? And maybe this could just fit into that decision. Right. Or, what if it's just you decide yourself to, you know, in consultation with the guidance counselor, your parents, and you. Take the exam at the end of 11th grade. If the argument goes that it's not a, that it's a skills test, not a content test, then is it reasonable to think those kids without taking, that could just pass it at the end of 11th grade? Even if, you know what I mean, like that you are going <coughs> to take AP, but you still have to take the regions at the end of that class. I have no objection to you and your staff making a decision about classes that kids fit or don't fit and how they do that. I worry about the test, that an entry point to that is taking a test out of sequence and who that advantages and who that doesn't advantage. And so if there's a way you can do that without a test, <laughs> then I'm okay with it. Or. Can I just to <laughs> help with that question? So, if you could frame for us what mm -hmm. the English 11 Common Core Regents exam looks like now. And this was the first year, so we have no experience of that exam. So, what is that? What is that test for? What does it look like? Well, two things, and the proposal from the department is that not the students would score an 80 or above, which is a particular proficiency level. Um, and to give some background on the recommendation of the English department is that the Common Core curriculum that they developed in 11 is worthwhile, is an important one, not only in the skills it develops, but also in the specific contents that focus on uh, American literature. Um, and and you know, I'll speak for them, you know, an educated 
uh, citizen of our democratic republic has to be aware of our literature and of our literary history. So that's a valuable group. Mm -hmm. um, and it's a valuable preparation for the Common Core uh, Regents exam, which uh, covers, as I think I've mentioned, um, the reading and, or, and writing of a typically expository prose. Mm -hmm. um, so there are some detailed reading comprehension uh, questions and an opportunity for students to display uh, their understanding of uh, rhetorical devices, argument, and to produce spotlight. Um, it, it moves somewhat away from, uh, in the previous iteration of Conference of English, she will focus on uh, literary terms, literary appreciation, mm -hmm. um, literary devices, and figures. It's still an important part of the exam, mm -hmm. but there's more of a pivot uh, towards, um, and I don't say this pejoratively, towards um, so it's going to sound pejorative, it's not uh, practical English. Uh, English as, uh, as a rhetorical um, skill so the students can both produce arguments and analyze and construct arguments. So that's, you know, in the thumbnail what the uh, what the English regents, uh, in my view, is what it's a, it's a measure. Um, in terms of uh, the replacing English London Honors with the EP course, the, the, the thought of the department, with my support, was um, they wanted to expand opportunities for students and offer another AP in a cost-neutral way, mm -hmm. uh, and therefore thought to pilot a replacement of English Women Honors with an AP course. Uh, wanted also to maximize some flexibility with students, so uh, students could sign up either for AP Literature or AP Language in 11th or 12th grade. Uh, initially, the department uh, recommended, again with my support, that uh, this, these courses would be in a co-requisite relationship in the uh, that all students would take English or other regions um, and based on its curriculum and on the content that would teach students. And if students wanted to deepen and expand their, stu uh, their studies of uh, a language and literature, they could take one of two AP courses. Um, as we uh, continued our programming and started to schedule students, uh, we've got some feedback from students and parents that that requirement, that co that co-requisite requirement, was taking up a pretty big uh, footprint mm -hmm. in uh, you know, the mm -hmm. potential schedule of students, mm -hmm. and they mm -hmm. wondered if there was any way to relieve that. Um, so the department looked at the existing, uh, um, rather called a waiver process. Um, we're, we're trying to rephrase that as a mastery option. Um, looked at what uh, was developed for English 12, uh, it, where students who met certain criteria, certain uh, situations, were exempted, uh, were able to demonstrate mastery of English 12 regions. Uh, and in developing that way the department, again, emphasizing what the, uh, uh, the Common Core Regents test um, measures, and uh, uh, certainly agreeing with the importance of the care of students for uh, success after high school, wanted to see uh, a proficiency or mastery level of AP or above on the Common Core Regents exam in order to give students the opportunity to demonstrate the mastery of that. Uh, so in a nutshell, that was the, the history of this uh, this uh, proposal that the department has developed in response to uh, some concerns from parents and students that required the co-requisite you might take up too much space mm -hmm. in the mm -hmm. So I'll get to you, but uh, so I have two questions. Uh, one is um, the, the proposal is to uh, allow students to take the AP new AP course, um, assuming that they have passed the Regents exam at the end of tenth grade. Correct. With one correct that they have uh, scored an 80 or above. Okay. Which translates into a level four or above. So, so is, it, is it the opinion of the English department and yourself that students who choose this option will have been prepared by us to take the Regents exam at the end of 10th grade and get an 80 or above? In, in my view, there's no typical student, of course, but I assume that, that most of not all these students will have taken English 9 honors and English 10 honors. And in my view, I might defer with the department, but yeah, I would think that these students were certainly prepared to uh, score 80 and above on the regions exam. 
my research and in calling around schools um, um, give the English regents um, really any time they want. It would be crazy to give it in the ninth grade. But many schools give it, particularly for honor students, they'll give it in the tenth grade. Um, some schools in the past have had students take the English regents in January of their junior year. Uh, that way to see you know, who might need more remediation for children. So okay. there's no requirement that students have to take so a particular I only that they have to so I think I've, you've answered my next question, which was, you know, why not just have those students take the Regents at the end of 11th grade since they will have already taken the AP exam by the end of the school year in 11th grade? Well, to, to, to speak for the English department, they're, again, I'm speaking for them, but I think I'm on solid ground. They would require or would request or recommend that students take English Latin Regents. It's valuable curriculum and it's very important to them. Failing that and wanting to be flexible in response to some student concerns, they would at least want students to be able to demonstrate that they've mastered the skills that that curriculum covers. Okay. Deirdre? Um, in your view, would it be very difficult, and maybe this is what's motivating these parents who have questions, would it be very difficult for a student in 11th grade to enroll in both of those, AP English and the Regents English, and also be undertaking, let's say, AP coursework in science, or would it really be the case that students would start to kind of go in tracks, like towards doing science or doing humanities I, I That would be a question I would have. I mean, we would want to, I would think we'd want to preserve flexibility so students could combine all of those options. I'll, I'll answer in two ways. It did a, it, Beta test is the wrong way to look at it. But I looked at, um, or more like a phrase, I looked at students currently who are in English 11 mm -hmm. honors to say, all right, those students, let's say that they would want to take AP, would they be able to fit, you know, this year, a second English course, uh, an English 11 regents in their, in their mm -hmm. program? Most would, uh, when I looked at this year's schedule. Okay. That being said, um, what's more difficult to factor in is, you know, for the student who may be taking AP Chemistry and who may be, you know, a two-season athlete, mm -hmm. maybe taking AP Language, mm -hmm. that begins to change the calculus. Mm -hmm. So it's not, for me, anyone anyway, thinking about it, it's not quite as simple as saying, well, it's got, she's got room in her schedule, right. so she can take two, right. and so there's other factors that, right. uh, in addition, in thinking about the, the waiver that we put in place, the mastery option for the senior year, there's one of the options that allow for, um, you know, another compelling scenario that would allow for this waiver. Um, because, again, with the seniors, sometimes there are, what we found is that there are family obligations and work obligations that really change mm -hmm. what students are able to do during mm -hmm. the school day. So we want to be able to that. So I think to summarize, we want to be flexible, but flexible in a way that ensures that the students have mastered the, right. the curriculum and the skills uh, that will allow them to be successful after high school, and those are measured by the, the common core English curriculum. So if you take the AP and you don't take English, the 11R English class, then in 12th grade you would take what English class? <laughs> so just to, uh, to make it easier for me to be confident, so we'll say a student, if the if, if this waiver uh, process, mastery process is approved, the student exercises that option, scores an eight or above on the English, mm -hmm. takes English, AP, uh, AP literature. Mm -hmm. Then in 12th grade, um, the student's option would be to take English 12R and or um, the second AP English mm -hmm. course, AP language. Mm -hmm. right now. Do you have any um, concerns about this issue of like the subculture of parents who tutor their children to pass exams and sort of creating a dual system in our high school that students who have professional class parents who can help them get as many APs as possible and students who don't have those advantages? 
Well, I'll, I'll answer it this way. I would prefer, and, and I've said this to parents and students, I would prefer that no one goes to any two percent outside mm -hmm. school. Mm -hmm. I don't think it's necessary. If they need help, we have teachers here. That's what they're here for. That's what they do. They're mm -hmm. certified. They're professionals. Mm -hmm. They're excellent. Um, so that would be my preference. But I, you know, I live in the world that we all live in, and that that's not the case. Um, I don't know how to prevent prevent that other than to say, we, hey, we have teachers here. Um, with our guidance counselors, uh, uh, certainly their message is that uh, everyone is on a different developmental time. Mm -hmm. Everyone is individual. Um, you don't have to keep up with the Joneses. You have to do what's best for, them, for you. Um, with, uh, in this particular case of English, we have students who will take ninth grade English and 10th grade English. Um, those are common core line courses. I think more so than uh, in the case of the earth sciences. And most students, they don't take earth sciences. Yeah. They take physical sciences in middle school. But it's a completely new course. And I think that drives them, if I may, towards uh, towards uh, the yeah. uh, I don't think that, or I wouldn't say that in English, that there's that push towards uh, tutoring and preparing for an exam. Mm -hmm. Since the students are in the process of preparing for an exam. But the answer, your, your, your question more directly. Yeah, that, that's a concern. I'm not happy when I hear that. The, and I don't really have hard data on this, but when I hear mm -hmm. the students are going to tutor, uh, I think they'll be tutored outside of school mm -hmm. to prepare for a course that we teach mm -hmm. or to try to advance. And I'm not. Mm -hmm. It doesn't make sense. Mm -hmm. uh, who had their hand up first? A couple questions. Um, I just don't understand like, why, you know, based on their academic record, why students um, can't just choose which one to take. This kid is so interested in maybe the these students typically just don't have an English schedule. Just that's usually the way that it pans out. And they take the regions at the end, you know, one day. And the more than likely they're going to pass the students because that's what they're talking about. Um, what it does is it eliminates that, like, who's in the know about this way to get this waiver. Mm -hmm. um, I wonder. Um, not that a lot of kids are getting tutors for this, but that who knows how to do this, how to not look the system, but who knows how to, you know, like how would how would anybody go forward if this happened, you know, parents came to this year, how would it go forward, how would it go out? That, you know, that's mm -hmm. part of that other science thing, is that only a small group of people ever know. Um, so I just think, you know, mm -hmm. let them choose the class they want to take. I mean, both classes are valuable. We have a lot of classes that are valuable. Like kids would want to take, you know, more if they could, mm -hmm. but, you know, and then just take the regions and it kind of eliminates that problem. Um, well, I think, again, to speak for the English department, they would say, well, the English 11 R course is the course you have to take. <laughs> that, that prepares you for the regions exam. Mm -hmm. That covers American literature. But we're here if, you want to take, if you want to take more than that, that's great. But you got to take English 11 R. Except when you're talking about an exception to that for small kids. So, you know, if we're going to say that, then we should just say, like, we believe this is the best course and, you know, that's the way it has to be. And I'm just wondering, would this open the door to like someone that's you know really good math and say, you know, I want to take the regions here and let me, you know, advance that way? Or kind of open the door for kids mm -hmm. in certain areas to mm -hmm. try to, you know, do that. In, in mathematics, we've had you know, two or three students over the past 10 years who um, oh like to take calculus uh, as, a, as a senior and have not taken pre calculus as a junior. So what we've done in those instances, and they're pretty rare, uh, those students will take a pre-calculus course typically instead of uh, DCC. Um, and mm -hmm. then we'll take our pre-calculus final exam. Mm -hmm. And if they pass that exam, and are accredited to DCC for pre-cal, then we'll enroll them into the AP calculus. Um, so I think, again, I think the, uh, the department is trying to be flexible in terms of uh, what the uh, parents and students are, are looking mm -hmm. for. Um, and, and speaking with them, I know the bottom line is English 11R, that should be required for everyone. Um, but they're trying to pile a system that's been up to account for different circumstances. So if they pile this, how, how would like, the next year's class know? Like, are the teachers going to identify and offer that? Or like, how, you know, will this become less in you know, certain kinds of knowledge and that's not? Well, for, for, for sake of argument, um, and again, I'll talk about earth science. I know that uh, John's staff is very clear about uh, that option. Uh, 
we started uh, talking about that in the age of um, In the high school, uh, a couple of years ago, we had uh, some parents who uh, wondered if students could take uh, earth science and living environment. Uh, and that never really came up before. So I spoke with the mm -hmm. grants counselors and spoke with the department of the group show and thought, well, I'm sure if this is stable. So we sent a hard copy letter down. Mm -hmm. um, we said, mm -hmm. and say, you know, we're able to try this. So we do the same thing um, if this uh, master option is approved. Mm -hmm. um, I'd send a hard copy letter uh, all the coming juniors mm -hmm. for this option. So. Lisa? Um, I just want to say a word about the, the two track option issue that uh, has been talked about a little bit. Um, I mean, obviously there are parents who perceive that getting their kid a tutor to help them prepare for the earth science exam is a valuable thing to do. However, I can say from personal experience and the experience of the class that did that, took that path in the year that my son was an eighth grader, that there was no evidence of a clear advantage <laughs> to the students who got tutoring over the students who didn't. And in fact, I know that of the handful of kids who took the test that year, that at least one of the kids who did not take tutoring, did not do tutoring, passed sufficiently to be able to, to test out. And Several of the kids who were tutored did not get the, a grade above the cutoff level, including my own kid. Um, and that <laughs> taught me a lesson, which is that you don't necessarily do what everybody else does because everybody else says you've got to do it. Now, I'm not naive enough to think that you'll, as a district, be able to persuade people of Ed's position, which I agree with. Um, but I don't think that it should be the board's principal concern that parents not um, spend money that they choose to spend in particular ways and ways that aren't potentially useful to their kids. I think it's better for us to give kids the options that our educators think they should be given. Um, and if parents think that the way to maximize their child's chances to get them tutoring, it's not really within our power to prevent that. So let's not stay up at night, either not stay up at night worrying about it or more to a point, let's not deprive our kids of an option that they could have because of our concern about that. Laura? And you know, sort of to follow that thought, you're talking about kids who are already taking English 9 honors, English 10 honors. We already have that sort of more rigorous coursework built into our schedule. So AP Lit has AP in front of it. It seems like, for all intents and purposes, AP Lit is going to sort of be an 11 honors ish kind of class. You, you understand what I mean? Like, these are the kids that actually already excel in English. So understanding that U.S. literature is incredibly important and everybody should have it, you know, to then sort of slow them back down, I appreciate that the English department is willing to say, all right, give them the option. They can take both or they can, they can master this because these kids presumably are going to master the regents exam and they, they got the skills. And you know I'm all in favor of people taking as much English as they possibly can. So I, I actually think it's it's wonderful that the English department has thought through the relationship between the two parts of the curriculum in 11th grade and uh, is encouraging people to work towards taking both of those courses together while anticipating ways and pathways 
uh, if there are conflicts in the schedule. Because as we know, the master's schedule is this incredible kind of rubrics cube that um, you and, and guidance have to put together every year. We are a small school. It's extraordinary to me the opportunities we make available with these kind of very complicated um, uh, you know, arrangements with small numbers of students for many, many course options. And so building in some possibility of flexibility strikes me as, as really prudent and humane. It may lead to less stress on, on some level. And I am very proud of our district's stance on a much more open pathway to AP enrollments than is the case in many school districts where they create very high bar for participation typically in AP coursework or you know, kind of movement through different kinds of pathways to get to those classes. Um, we know that it, participation in AP programs can be very, very helpful for students, maybe not even students who are identified as being in an honors track. And, um, and again, I want to reaffirm the decision that was made to continue to make a participation in AP and taking AP exams available to all of our students, regardless of that cost, by, by not charging families for those, for those AP exams. So I think if we as a district believe in the value of AP programs, which I think we, we do because we, we offer them, um, trying to create a flexible solution and introduce yet another option, particularly for students who love reading, because this is a literature-based AP, um, the Common Core has moved increasingly away from having students engage with literary texts, um, fiction, and so forth. So I think creating an option for students who really love that kind of work is, is a really great development, if we can make sure it's available and open. And can I just follow up to, mm -hmm. to say, because I want to make sure that I understand, I want to make sure that I understand exactly what we're talking about here. So this waiver is not a, a way of preventing students who might want to take the AP class from taking the class, if I'm understanding correctly. It's just a way to offer students who can get an 80 or better on the regions, the, the English 11 regents, to not have to take uh, 11, uh, English 11R. So a student who doesn't make that cutoff could still conceivably take a English 11R and yes. the 80 You take them together, right? Yeah. Okay. That, I just wanted to make sure that I was yeah, understanding. that would be great. Peter? Yeah, so I, I'm just going to vote against this, but it's not because uh, I am not in favor of choice. I've always been in favor of choice uh, and uh, supporting students and flexibility and scheduling, but I do worry about the consequences of this of a test as the bar. Mm -hmm. um, not about that I'm concerned about parents, how they spend their money is not really my concern, but how we promote different kinds of messages about achievement and success and who has access to different um, courses and, and how you get access. So um, I respect the English department, of course, and, and your leadership at the high school around this, but right now I'm not comfortable with that as the, the way to structure it. So I just want to explain to you my negative vote. Well, just, you know, just to, to expand a little bit, the, um, the criteria for you know, demonstrating this mastery um, is not based only on the, the score on the test, but other uh, scenarios have to obtain, you know, similar to what we do for English as right. well in AP, regarding numbers of AP courses, mm -hmm. or if there's a schedule, if there's a course in conflict, um, or a scheduling conflict that we can taking that, um, or the, uh, um, you know, kind of the catch-all that we found useful, if there's another compelling reason. So it wouldn't be, uh, as we envision a, a, a scenario in which a student would just you know, take the test, get an 80 or above, and then not have to take the English one. There'd have to be other uh, characteristics of his or schedule that would need to be in place in order to receive the English. Just to expand it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. All right, anything else? OK, so Diane? Um, I guess I just would say that, you know, I think that the school has done over the couple of, last couple of years a better job communicating the ways they're assigned so that they give parents the options. Um, but I do think we need to explain it a little bit 
other parents because they, you know, they see that um, mm -hmm. acceleration or that AP, mm -hmm. and it's sometimes like a moth to the flame. You know, I don't know mm -hmm. if they understand, mm -hmm. or, you know, what it actually means mm -hmm. for their student, and that might be something that we could, mm -hmm. could really get better at, mm -hmm. you know, so they can understand what it means instead of just my kids accelerate. <laughs> I know we have to shut this off, but I mean that this other larger conversation that I think you know we haven't had, but it fits into, is like you said, the moth to the flame, right? I don't think kids are always just taking AP exams because they have a love mm -hmm. for the subject matter, <laughs> but because of the high stakes of like the way to get into particular colleges to have X, Y, or Z number of AP exams, and you can go online and get all kinds of advice that says you need to take five, six, whatever. And, you know, the importance of our guidance counselors, and I know they've tried to do that job of kind of de-stressing this process and making it authentic for students instead of trying to fit into this kind of high-pressure uh, pathway to college is something that's really important. And so I do have concerns about how we create a climate that's a high pressure climate to take as many APs as you can because you have to to be successful. Having been in certainly my guidance counselor group, having worked with administrators who slept for some time now, their their consistent message is that students should take the rigorous courses they can, but which they have a reasonable expectation of doing, doing fairly well. That's not mm -hmm. an AP course in all, in all cases. It's not an honors course in all cases. It's really, their focus is on the individual student and uh, uh, supporting their education in a way that's going to prepare them uh, to move on from high school. So that's, uh, uh, that's certainly not the message that comes from my mm -hmm. archives department. It's not the message that comes from, from my office. Well, I know where that is going. Well, I know where that is going. <laughs> right. <laughs> so, we try to militate against it, of course, with students individually. So, they feel principal, confident, and they're not a person that will help. Thank you. All right. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Uh, so, let's we'll vote on this. All those in favor? That's all except Burns. No, Burns. Okay. That motion passes. I have a motion upon the recommendation of the superintendent of schools to approve the appointment of additional department chairs and advisors for Rhinebeck High School for the 2016-17 school year. So moved. Second. Any discussion? All those in favor? That's unanimous. That motion passes. I have a motion upon the recommendation. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> the superintendent of schools <clears throat> to approve the appointment of the following individuals to the positions in accordance with the RTA salary schedule. 2016-17 as follows. David Airstock, Health and Wellness Coordinator, $4,687. Carolyn Peck, Central Treasurer, $2,586. Stephen Boucher, Athletic Director, $7,039. So moved. Second. Any discussion? All those in favor? That's unanimous. That motion passes. I have a motion upon the recommendation of the Superintendent of Schools to approve additional, uh, additional summer 2016 curriculum program and clerical work. So moved. Second. Any discussion? All those in favor? That's unanimous. That motion passes. I have a motion upon the recommendation of the Superintendent of Schools to approve the resignation of Tina Myers from the position of custodial worker effective July 1st, 2016. So moved. Second. Any discussion? All those in favor? That's unanimous. That motion passes. I have a motion upon the recommendation of the superintendent of schools to appoint Tina Myers to the civil service position of senior custodial worker assigned to the Chancellor Livingston Elementary School, effective July 1st, 2016, on step 13, $52,534 in accordance with the annie salary schedule for 2016-17 with a 26-week probationary period. So moved. Second. Any discussion? All those in favor? That's unanimous. That motion passes. I have a motion upon the recommendation of the superintendent of schools to appoint Stacy Stolicker to the civil service position of senior typist assigned to the office of the director of special education, effective July 5th, 2016, on step four, $38,002 in accordance with the annual salary schedule for 2016-17 with a 26-week probationary period. So moved. Second. Any discussion? 
All those in favor? Pass unanimous. That motion passes. May have a motion upon the recommendation of the superintendent of schools to approve as a first reading the consideration of new board policy number 8334, use of credit cards. So moved. Second. Any discussion? Laura? I just have a quick question. In the policy, it reads um, that certain board members would be granted the use of the credit card. Is there any circumstance under which we feel like a board member should have a different credit card? If you were going to the NISPA conference by yourself and you needed to pay for certain expenses there, then they don't accept the purchase order. You might want to take a credit card unless you wanted to put it on your own credit card and be reimbursed, which is what we're doing currently. There are now, in addition to that, there are other reasons that we've talked about at policy committee where some vendors won't take a purchase order. They will only take a, per a credit card. Right. So, no, I understand that part. Yeah, I mean, that kind, of, that kind of pushed the envelope on the convenience of using your own credit card and getting reimbursed versus the actual need now for a school district to have a credit card because some vendors just won't take a PO anymore. Right. Yeah, I, I totally get that. I was yeah. just wondering about, you know, is there any concern about mm. board members having district credit cards? As long as you use it properly. Mm -hmm. Of course. <laughs> 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 <I'm Yeah>. course. <laughs> if you don't, then I'll have some issues. <laughs> I mean, you, you, you all do take an oath at the beginning of your your term of office, so... Oh, yeah. Well, I mean, anybody could abuse a credit card. That's why we, we tried to set out parameters to kind of delimit how we would be using them, and people aren't going to be running around with credit cards in their pockets. They're for a very narrow and specific use. Mm -hmm. All those in favor? That's unanimous. That motion passes. We have a motion upon the recommendation of the superintendent of schools to approve summer 2016 special education service providers. So moved. Second. Any discussion? All those in favor? All except Fleischauer. Uh, Abstention, Vice Shower. That motion passes. We have a motion upon the recommendation of the Superintendent of Schools to approve 2014 15 budget transfers in accordance with board policy number 6150 for the school year ending June 30th, 2016. That should be corrected to 1516. Oh, that should be 15 So this should, should be 2015 16 mm -hmm. budget okay. transfers. Yep. Okay. So moved. Second. Okay. All those in favor of the amended resolution? That's your answer. That motion passes. We have a motion upon the recommendation of the superintendent of schools to approve the following resolution regarding the transfer of unappropriated fund balance to the school lunch fund. Be it resolved that the Board of Education of the Rhinebeck Central School District hereby authorizes the appropriation of $45,000 from general fund unappropriated fund balance to be transferred to the school lunch fund to cover the prior year school lunch fund deficit and the current year operating loss by June 30th, 2016. So moved. Second. Any discussion? All those in favor? That's unanimous. That motion passes. We have a motion upon the recommendation of the superintendent of schools to approve the following resolution regarding the lease purchase acquisition of computer technology hardware, software, and related equipment. Be it resolved upon the recommendation of the superintendent of schools that the Board of Education hereby approves the contract with Dutchess County BOCES for the acquisition of computer technology, hardware, software, and related equipment through a three-year installment purchase agreement, IPA, commencing in the 2016-17 school year with a total principal cost of $113,199.85 and be it further resolved that the Rhinebeck Central School District will pay Dutchess County BOCES through its regular billing cycle, monthly billing cycle, over the three-year period to commence during the 2016-17 school year. So moved. Second. Any discussion? All those in favor? That's unanimous. That motion passes. We have a motion upon the recommendation of the superintendent of schools to approve the following resolution regarding the terms and conditions of a cooperative purchasing program for goods and services with the Region 4 Education Service Center 
lead agency for the Cooperative Purchasing Network, TCPN. Whereas the Board of, Ed, uh, the Board of Trustees of the Rhinebeck Central School District has been presented a proposed interlocal agreement by and between the Region 4 Education Service Center, lead agency for the Cooperative Purchasing Network, TCPN, and the Rhinebeck Central School District found to be acceptable and in the best interests of the Rhinebeck Central School District and its citizens are hereby in all things approved. Now therefore be it resolved by the Board of Trustees of the Rhinebeck Central School District, Rhinebeck, New York, that section one, the terms and conditions of the agreement having been reviewed by the Board of Trustees of the Rhinebeck Central School District and found to be acceptable in the best interests of the Rhinebeck Central School District and its citizens are hereby in all things approved. Section 2, Thomas E. Brunell, Purchasing Agent of the Rhinebeck Central School District under the direction of the Board of Trustees of the Rhinebeck Central School District is hereby designated to act for the Rhinebeck Central School District in all matters relating to the Cooperative Purchasing Agreement or uh, Cooperative Purchasing Network including the designation of specific contracts in which the Rhinebeck Central School District desires to participate. So moved. <laughs> Any discussion? All those in favor? That's unanimous. That motion passes. We have a motion upon the recommendation of the superintendent of schools to approve the summer 2016 Board of Education meeting schedule. So moved. Second. Any discussion? All those in favor? That's unanimous. That motion passes. We have a motion upon the recommendation of the superintendent of schools to approve the appointment of the 2016-17 CSE CPSE committee chairs. CSE, CPSE parent members, and CSE, CPSE committee members. So moved. Second. Any discussion? All those in favor? That's unanimous. That motion passes. We have a motion upon the recommendation of the superintendent of schools to approve the list of additional, uh, additional emergency conditional substitute teachers and substitute non-instructional staff for the 2015-16 school year. So moved. Second. Any discussion? Uh, no, it's 15 16. Yeah, this uh, I can explain after yeah. Mark finishes. Okay, sorry. <laughs> you got your motion second? Yes. Uh, this, this is just to have the replacement for Laura Magley be able to come in for a few days and shadow her before she retires. So it is in this current school year. Okay. Did you get a motion second? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> All those in favor? That's unanimous. That motion passes. We have a motion upon the recommendation of the superintendent of schools to accept a donation of 11 scholarships for four-week introductory martial arts programs and uniforms valued at $1,650 for Chancellor Livingston Elementary School students from Robert P. LeClaire, LeClaire's Martial Arts, to be di distributed to students selected by the school principal. So moved. Second. Any discussion? Yes. Yeah. So I just have like a moderate concern that this is kind of like an advertising mm -hmm. thing for the martial arts program. Well, we, I mean, we had a concern the way it was presented initially, but we, we, we re, we redirected that and uh, said that if they wanted to make a donation to the school district to give these scholarships to kids who might not have the money to participate in the summer program, that we, we would be the conduit for, for doing that. Um, I mean, we did, we did initially have a concern about that. In fact, Mark had brought, there was, there was started out as, a, as a, uh, an effort to raise money and have members of the staff contribute money, and we, we put, a, we put a, an end to that and uh, told this particular vendor that if he wanted to donate scholarships free and clear no cost involved that we would uh, you know we would distribute them to kids who might have an interest in maybe wouldn't be able to afford a summer program it's really up to them as to whether they decide to do anything with it beyond a summer program Diane, Diane. Two questions. So this covers yep. an entire summer program. Oh, it's, it's, it's not an entire it's a four week okay. it's a four week program yeah That, yeah, we didn't solicit this. Dear. 
so I apologize like it was on my mind but I didn't ask ahead of time I just I'm assuming mm -hmm. it's not like a board policy like it is a donation but it's really to direct people in a very specific place I just want to make sure there are issues around like a private entity it's not non pro I, I mean I yeah I, the, the only thing in our policy it prohibits uh, private entities uh, or or for profits from using school facilities to make money. If they were going to be holding classes here and charging kids, then that would be that would not be allowed. So I mean, to to the best of my understanding, this doesn't violate any board policy or state education department regulation. It's giving a giving this to our students there, looking for us to distribute these scholarships. There's no cost to the, to the kid. There's no, mm -hmm. they're not making money off, I mean, directly, they're not making money off our school. Now, should a kid decide, hey, I like martial arts and, you know, I'd like to, to pursue this in the fall? I mean, there's nothing, I'm not sure how we can, how we control that. Uh, any more than any other free program that a kid might decide, yeah, I want to keep keep doing this. I mean, if the art center, um, I, maybe that's, I'm not sure if they're, they're probably not for profit, but you know, if the art center, for example, wanted to donate scholarships <coughs> to, want to their, one of their summer programs, I mean, a kid might want to keep taking programs there after that program was done. If this involved kids paying money for part of the, for even part of this, it would, from my perspective, it just would have been a flat, no, because you're, you are now making money off these kids. If you're giving a scholarship, then it's, it's not a money maker. Okay. All right, any other questions? Okay, all those in favor? That's unanimous, that motion passes. We have a motion upon the recommendation of the superintendent of schools to approve the appointment of Chelsea Leahy to the part-time .8 FTE long-term leave replacement position of grade 7 science teacher assigned to Bulkley Middle School, effective September 1, 2016, at a salary of Step 1 MA, $58,482 prorated equals $46,786 in accordance with the RTA salary schedule for 2016-17. So moved. Second. Discussion. All those in favor? That's unanimous. That motion passes. We have a motion upon the recommendation of the superintendent of schools to approve the appointment of chairs for Chancellor Livingston Elementary School for the 2016-17 school year. So moved. Second. Any discussion? All those in favor? That's unanimous. That motion passes. We have a motion upon the recommendation of the superintendent of schools to appoint Kyle Moore the civil service position of custodial worker assigned to the Chancellor Livingston Elementary School, effective July 1st, 2016, on step one, $33,704 in accordance with the annie salary schedule for 2016-17 with a 26-week probationary period. So moved. Second. Any discussion? All those in favor? That's unanimous. That motion passes. We have a motion upon the recommendation of the superintendent of schools to appoint TBA to provide architectural engineering services as needed for possible future capital projects and as architect of record as outlined in their submitted request for proposal. So moved. Second. So I, I, I'm, I put this in my note to you earlier today. I'm proposing that the board table this motion until our July 12th meeting, at which time we expect to have a fully mm -hmm. legal council vetted. Um, recommendation to make table Okay. Second. Mm -hmm. Okay. All in favor of tabling the motion? That's unanimous. That motion is tabled. We have a motion upon the recommendation of the superintendent of schools to approve a leave extension or extension of a leave request under the Family and Medical Leave Act from Laura Natalie, having commenced on May 31st, 2016, with such leave to be taken as paid medical leave through the period of disability as certified by a physician in writing for the extent of her accrued sick leave and thereafter such leave to be taken as unpaid child care leave through January 2nd, 2017. So moved. Second. Any discussion? All those in favor? That's unanimous. That motion passes. 
and motion on the recommendation of the superintendent of schools to approve additional work related to the compilation, editing, and publication of the 2015-16 anthology of student writing. So moved. Any discussion? All those in favor? That's unanimous. That motion passes. We have a motion to. Hey, Mark, I just ahead. say that. Um, I also put in your packet tonight uh, another. And I sent you an email about this earlier today. Another adjustment to uh, to a uh, to the number of hours for Susan St. Clair for mm -hmm. this past summer, who was approved for 40 hours, but actually worked 49 with the approval of Marvin Kreps and John Chemnitzer. Mm -hmm. um, so is there a motion? Yeah, I, I just I just gave you that Someone that motion to approve the increase of forty to forty nine <coughs> hours for Susan St. Clair for summer two thousand fifteen. So that's gonna be six point two. That would be six point two six and then we'll just mm -hmm. bump the others down. So moved. Second. Okay. All those in favor? That's the that passes. I just moved to table, right? Yeah, I would, two, I would six, table, two, the, table the next two, yeah. 6.28 on yes. the tabling. Okay. All those in favor of uh, tabling motions 6.27 and 6.28? Diane. Oh, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> Keep your head. <laughs> uh, those motions are tabled. All right, may I have a motion to move into executive session for the purpose of discussion of the employment history of a particular person? So moved. Set. Okay, all those in favor? That's unanimous. That motion passes. And we're moving into executive session. Communication. 